Okay, so using fundamental identities to prove that to write one trigonometric function in terms of another one. So we're just going to use this as our example. So what I'm being asked to do here is how could you write sine of theta in terms of secant of theta? And before we go farther with this, further with this, um, let me give you some really, really good help, and I hope you're available to hear it, that there are these eight trigonometric, uh, fundamental trigonometric identities. And if you have those things memorized, and if you don't have them memorized, just open your book and find them. They are the reciprocal identities, they are the tangent and cotangent identities, and they are the Pythagorean identities. And if you know those identities, you have a really good start. And if you don't, my gosh, I don't know how anybody could get through it. So it's, it's not you, but you have to bring these fundamental identities with you. So having said that, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then can you go look for my video on fundamental identities um, or look in a really good textbook and find those identities, write them down on a, on, a, um, on a flashcard and have them with you for now. It will really pay off. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start this problem, and I'm going to start this problem with the, um, I think I'm going to start with the Pythagorean identity. And the Pythagorean identity I'm going to start with is this one, that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. All right, now remember, what we're looking for is we're looking to get this thing in terms of secant theta. So, um, so here's what I did. Here's what I did. I did this. I did uh, I, a cosine squared theta, take it away from both sides, minus cosine squared theta, if you don't mind. I'm going to get sine squared theta is equal to opposite cosine squared theta plus 1. Um, now look, this is it's more algebra stuff you have to kind of be able to visualize, but this is a difference of squares, right? Difference of squares, right? So here's my difference of squares here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move these pieces around. Now this positive one is this one, and this negative or opposite cosine squared theta is this one. So I, all I did was just move stuff around a little bit, right? So hopefully you're still good with me. Okay. Now, see now, this is not in terms of this is not in terms yet of secant of theta. What I do know is that there's a reciprocal identity between cosine theta and secant theta, um, and that's in the reciprocal identities, and hopefully you're putting your finger on that and going, yeah, I see that, Charlie, that's it right there. So, but what I'm going to do first, if you don't mind, is I'm going to factor this out. And again, I, I recognize this as difference of squares, so I'm going to keep my sine squared theta here is equal to, right, this is, Difference of squares, so it's the same as 1 plus cosine theta. Remember, cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine squared theta. Just the square happens to go there. Times 1 minus cosine squared theta. And still, you're like, what the hell are you talking about? This is not what I was looking for. So let's start moving, start looking at this a little bit and say, okay, oops, shouldn't have done that. Thanks. Um, I'm just going to trade cosine if you look in your reciprocal identities, cosine theta can be rewritten as 1 over secant theta, right? So 1 plus 1 over secant theta. All I'm doing is exchanging this for an equal piece, right? By definition, that's true. 1 minus 1 over secant, uh, sorry, secant theta, right? Here's my sine squared theta. And the reason this is not in terms of this whole thing yet is because we have a problem. This, is, this piece right here is not in terms of secant. So I'm going to keep working on this for a second. Okay, this gets a little bit weird, but isn't it true that 1 is the same as secant theta over secant theta plus this, so that's this 1 right here. Anything over itself is 1. So 1 over C, whoops, sorry, secant theta, right? Secant theta theta, right? And here this is same thing. I'm going to trade in this piece. 1 is the same as secant theta over secant theta. And you're going, why the hell are you doing this? Because our charge here, our mission here, is to put everything in terms of secant theta. That's what it says, right, if you go up to the beginning of the problem. So now we have sine squared theta here, right? Going to just do some simple algebra, right? We're going to add this to this so we get secant theta plus 1 over secant theta. You agree that's this, right? This is 
secant theta over secant theta, that's secant theta over secant theta. This one is this one, and it's one over secant theta, so one over secant theta there, isn't it? I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. It's gonna be secant theta minus one, isn't it? Over secant theta, right? It's equal to sine squared theta. If you're still with me, you're, you're amazing, seriously. And I just wanna remind you that this negative sign is this one. This one is this one, this secant is this one, and these two secants, right, they are common denominators. We don't add common denominators, we just bring them along, don't we? This plus sign, you guys, this plus sign right here is this plus sign right here, isn't it? So hopefully you can see where all this came from. Now I'm going to, believe it or not, I'm going to do some, I'm going to multiply this back, right? We get secant theta times secant theta is equal to secant squared theta, isn't it? We know that this times this, this is difference of squares again, is secant theta squared, right, minus 1. And if you do the FOIL on this, if you FOIL this and this, you would see that this is true if it's not obvious right now. It's equal to, check me out here, which is equal to sine squared, right, theta. Right? We want sine of theta, not sine squared theta. So how do you undo this square? Well, right, you take the square root of both sides, right? Square root of both sides. So we go through this, and we remember, right, that the square root of A over B is the same as the square root of A over the square root of B, isn't it? So the square root of this is just sine theta, thank God, we're finally at sine theta, is equal to, well, the square root of this piece at the top cannot be remedied perfectly, so I'm going to leave it like that. But what is the square root of secant squared? It's just secant, isn't it? So secant theta, and here's our solution. Look, I bet one of you is going to find a way to do this differently. When you do, um, please send me a video response. I'd love to hear this. And I want to go back and tell you this. I'm sure you're looking at this going, what in the hell is this mess? You can definitely do this. I, I want to be clear about it. You can definitely, definitely do this. But if it was that easy, everyone could do it, right? But, so you got to kind of stick with it, and you have got to memorize those fundamental identities, right? There are eight of them. If there's something I can do to help you, please let me know. It is my pleasure.